Hello, welcome to the Reeve and McIntyre show. Today we're going on an expedition to the frozen north. So it's very important that we are properly prepared. As you can see, I am properly prepared. In this backpack, I'm carrying all the things I need for my journey. Ooh, is it terribly heavy? Well, Sarah, its weight has been scientifically calculated to be just exactly as much as I can carry. If it was even one kilo heavier, I would crumble like a biscuit. But as it is, it's fine. I hardly know it's back there. So, what are you going to wear to the frozen north? Well, I thought I would go like this. You can't go on an expedition to the frozen north dressed like that. You'll get horribly crumpled. No, I won't. Because look, I've got this handy travel iron. Ooh. Only, I don't have room for it in my pockets. Can I put it in your backpack? Yes, yes, of course. Pop it back there. Oh, hang on. How much does that iron weigh? It's just one kilo. Too heavy! Ah! And the other thing we're going to need is some pugs to pull our sled. We'll need about 66 of them. But where are we going to find 66 pugs? You can find 66 pugs in our book, Pugs of the Frozen North. But how about having a pug right where you are now? Does that sound like a good idea? That's a good story. Okay, first we're gonna draw a circle for our pug's head. So quite large on the paper, like that. And then for the nose, we're gonna draw the letter M, like boom, boom. And then make a little house or igloo for it, just like that. Then we're gonna do the letter C for his muzzle and a backward C. And a fun thing about drawing a pug is you get a bit of tongue sticking out. So you can decide how much tongue is gonna be hanging out there. Put a line down it and draw a little chin there. And then you can put some little um, dots for whiskers. Now pug's eyes can be quite popping, like they look like they're popping out of their heads. So start with a big old circle for this eye here. And then just to make it look a bit more wild, we're gonna make the other circle even bigger. Might even go off the side of the face a little bit like that. And you can draw two pupils. I'm gonna make mine cross-eyed, but they can be looking any direction. There we go. And color them in nice and dark. And pugs often have very wrinkly foreheads, so we're gonna do a nice wrinkle down the middle. That, and then a second one, a third wrinkle. And the ears of pugs, they're quite easy to draw. You, they're just kind of flop about. So you go up and down like that, and then cap it off and color that in nice and dark. And then the other one, up, down, like that, and cap it off, draw it nice and color it in nice and dark. Now the pugs in the, in the book are wearing jumpers. It's, it's the arm of a sweater cut off. So we're gonna show his turtleneck, going all the way like that. And to make it look knitted, we're gonna make it stripy. Just like that. And a pug's body, they're quite solid little things. So it's gonna be like a kind of a jelly bean just like that. And it doesn't really matter what shape it is. It somehow it always seems to work when you're drawing a pug. There we go. And do a line over its bottom to show where its jumper ends. And you can add some little knitted lines along the bottom of it. And just so he looks like he's really in a jumper, add a few more little knitted marks here. Now a pug's tail is kind of like a little round Danish pastry. So you're going to come up and curl around, just like that. And the feet, they kind of come off like little sausages, like that, that. And you might want to darken up the feet a little bit, just make them stand out get a bit more against the snow. And two more coming off the back. 
and darken them up. Now right now he looks like he's just kind of like pushed up against the snow, but we want him to look like he's jumping. So we're going to put a shadow underneath him and leave a little space between your pug, the feet and the ground. And then you can see it's really kind of bouncing along. You might want to do some running lines coming off of him, maybe even some action lines. And what do pugs say in our book? They say, yip. So give them a sound effect. Yip. And once you've done that, you can draw a speech bubble around it. Like that. And then the last thing you should do is give your pug a name. So what's, what are you going to name your pug? I think I'm going to name mine Philip. This is Philip the pug. Sir, Sir Philip the pug. Just to be really posh there. <laughs> and last thing you want to do is sign your picture. And there you go. You have your very own pug. Thanks for joining me at Drawing with Sarah. You can find lots more fun free activities on my website, jabberworks.co.uk. And you can follow me on social media. I'd love to see your drawings. Post them with the hashtag Drawing with Sarah. Help! Oi, McIntyre, over here! Oh, and follow Philip too. Here you go. Bye bye. See you next time. Yeah!